Vernon Bell. Vernon, like when I, uh, I have an album I did with the legendary Jim Dickinson. Yeah, here's his memory, bless his heart. Uh, called Citation, and I wrote a song for that. When I was writing for that record, I, uh, I live in Knoxville, Tennessee. Ooh, yeah, and yeah. Can't, can't spray for those East Tennesseans. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I rented an apartment downtown near the university where I just had like a table and a chair and a typewriter and a guitar and I would go in there every day and write. And I'd read the paper every day before I would do this and the Knoxville News Sentinel is nothing really to write home about. But I would do the cryptogram every morning and pretend I was breaking German code and I'd do the crossword and the jumble and then read the obits. And uh, I was really surprised by how many East Tennesseans had joined the Navy in World War II. Of course, we're losing World War II people by the bucket loads right now. They don't know where to put them all, as a matter of fact. That's how many they're, they're dying now. But amazing generation. My parents were one of them, and they made me realize that every fucking day of my life. <laughs> anyway, why were all these hillbillies joining the Navy, I wondered. Like, were they... Were they just wanted to get the hell away from East Tennessee, or were they so stupid they were like, no, we need you in the Navy. So they went. Well, that was Vern. He went and joined the Navy, then he came back and did, was a machinist for 50 years for this company called Roman Haas, which has a factory in Tennessee, which our great-grandchildren will be digging up shit that those people are doing <laughs> and buried. Anyway, I don't give a damn. Uh, where was I going with this? I <laughs> Oh, I remember. Vern and I get along because we both love college football. And so uh, we were always talking about college football. So then I toured so much this fall, I had one weekend at home, one solid weekend. And my wife was gone on some sort of little horse trip because she has a horse that I call the goddamn horse because those things are expensive. And this thing is like 32 years old. And she'll be like, I need a new car. I'm like, no, you need to ride your horse to work. Is what you need to do. So anyway, she was gone. I had the whole weekend to do nothing but watch college football and talk smack with her. So uh, we had just got a new front door on the house. So I was going to paint this door. And I, you probably don't know this, but I used to be a, I was a professional painter there for a little bit in between jobs that I did for music. So I had like my old painter pants, my old painter shoes, and I went down and bought all my supplies and got some cheap vodka and I was ready to do it for the whole day. And I noticed our cable wasn't working. So I went over next door to Vern and I was like, hey Vern, is your cable working? And he was like, no, I can do a pretty good Vern. You don't know Vern, but I do a good Vern. He was like, no, uh, mine's not working either. So I was like, well, I'll call, I'll call the cable company. I called the cable company and we live in this area of Knoxville called Rocky Hill, which is imaginative as you think, a Rocky Hill. And I was like, hey, cable company, Comcast, nobody up here has cable. And uh, the Tennessee and Auburn game, which was on that week, that, uh, yeah, the Tennessee and Auburn, is coming on about 7 o'clock. I was like, unless you want a bunch of hillbillies down there with pitchforks and shit surrounding your building, I suggest you get somebody out here. And this guy goes, no. Uh, what you need to do is uh, get all your neighbors to call in because sometimes some of you people will call and lie to the cable company and say like the whole apartment complex is out the cable. So they send a truck right away. So I'm like, okay, fine. Democracy in action. So I'm up and down my street. I'm knocking on doors. Hey, is your cable working? No? Call them. Call them. Call them. Blah, blah, blah. I go back, I'm drinking the vodka, I'm painting the front door. <laughs> so then I see Vern out there. I'm like, hey, Vern, uh, did you call the cable company? He's like, I did, but damn, that menu was so long, I didn't even, I couldn't even bother with it. And I was like, Vern, that's the problem with your generation. You have no stick to it in this. <laughs>
A Navy bunk and mechanics paying guaranteed hot food. The only road he'd ever known. The only road was gravel, clay, and cotton bowls. The only road he'd ever known. The only road he'd ever known was gravel, clay, and cotton bowls. Elizabeth, this sweet young thing, was born with a broken heart. She talked of it, but you could tell she never traveled far. And she wrote poor Jimmy every day, and in the window hung a star. And read the paper for his name, and always crossed her heart. The only road she'd ever known.